Morning Blend, a powerful show everyone should see. Meet two teenagers who had, were headed down a deadly path. Crime, drugs, flunking out of school. Until one man helped turn their lives around. How did he do it? And what's the one thing he says every parent needs to know? Plus, we have a visit from the plant doctor. Bird lovers, don't miss it. It's all next. Okay, so here on the Morning Blend, we do a lot of parenting segments, but usually we target a very specific age group. Next week, we're going to talk about sign language for babies. Mm -hmm. You might remember last week, it was Hot Toys for Toddlers. And sometimes we give you quick tips on great books for school-age kids or suggest healthy things to pack in their lunches. Yesterday, we talked about teen acne. That's right. And But today, we're going to focus on troubled teenagers. Uh, we're going to have some tips for parents for kids of all ages. And today, you'll meet John Davis, a man who climbs mountains with troubled teen dream teens, he calls them, and he confronts abusive parents. He counsels teenagers who hide guns, sell drugs, and even get hooked by pornography. He looks straight at the kind of stuff that you'd rather not see. He authored this book. It's called Extreme Pursuit. It's a lifeline for getting your troubled teens turned around. And if you have a 17-year-old using drugs, listen up. If your child is older but getting close to rock bottom, if you feel like they might be at risk, you have to stay tuned for the show. Even if your kids are young, they'll grow faster than you can believe. Watch today's show. It is for you. Now, John Davis also created a counseling center to serve families and kids at risk. He's a speaker in demand at schools, businesses, youth groups, churches all over the country. He's here with us today. He lives in Denver with his four kids. His wife must be a saint. Um, and he's raising those four kids. He was here actually two months ago and we invited him back because his message was so powerful. And we're so glad to have you here today. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. I, you know, whenever I hear you talk about what you do for teens, I'm amazed because it, count, it sounds like the kind of stuff other therapists and counselors are not doing. Doing. Oh, and what I do really freaks out a lot of therapists and counselors because they're so concerned with crossing that ethical line that says you're not allowed to have a relationship with your patient. The problem is if in my world, if I wasn't connecting with my patients, then they really wouldn't choose to be successful. And you go as far to say that 37% of teens drop out or refuse the traditional um, therapy treatments, right. but that your success rate is pretty a, lo a lot higher. Yeah, I've never actually had a young guy, I've, I've counseled more than 1,500 kids, I've never had a young guy who started with me in treatment, started the intake, and you know came for those initial sessions that did not receive full treatment unless I kicked him out. So I have a 100% ratio of kids connecting and giving a shot and starting the program. Have most of them seen other therapists before they get to yeah, you? The average guy that I work with has seen between three, four, or five, you know, psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists, and you know, even school counselors. And, and it's just, it, it just goes to show that the modality that they, you know, teach you in graduate school says the therapist is here, the client is here, there's no way to really bridge that gap because if you do, you're crossing too many lines and too many boundaries and it makes therapists feel uncomfortable to think about connecting in such a creative way with a client because they're thinking, you're the one with the problem, I'm the one with solutions, so, you know, catch up. Let's yeah. break it down how you do things differently because it's pretty different. It's a 12-month program that, that you uh, facilitate, and then at the end, you even climb a mountain yeah. with these teenage kids? Yeah, you know, one of the goals in, in my program is to be able to go to whatever extreme. I have extreme guys that I work with, so I have to match that extremeness with the way that I do my practice. So that, that's called the Two Extreme Dream Program, and really the goal of that is to allow them to live the metaphor, which is life is a mountain. And these kids that we're looking at that you're working with, they, they look happy, they look like they're having a great time, but your dream team last year, I bet you work with seven felons, three varsity athletes, six addicts, six on pr probation? Correct. Yeah, I mean, they were guys that were making so many horrible, you know, choices based on just feeling miserable in their own circumstances. And they didn't know how to problem solve. They didn't know how to communicate. They didn't know how to effectively connect with anybody. And so they made bad choices. Tell us about the guys we're going to meet today here on the show. You brought along two young young guys. One of them's only 16, right. um, but had a history already of, of heavy drug use. Yeah. We'll start with uh, Tim. Tim's going to be our first guest. Tim is 18 years old. His brother was uh, brutally murdered you know, two years ago. And prior to that, I mean, he, this was his idol. I mean, this really, to him, was his father figure. So for him to lose that relationship made him, you know, just go way south and make horrible choices and was in a place where he was 
wanting to hurt and harm other people. The second one is Ren, and Ren is a 16-year-old guy, and Ren, you know, age 12, started smoking pot and then moved into crystal methamphetamine and was popping pills and skipping school and on the run and, you know, had three felonies by the time he was 14 years old. What's your theory? Uh, do most parents not know their kids are troubled? Do, are they in denial? Most parents are completely clueless. I mean, if you were to ask Ren specifically, you know, um, how easy was it for you to get into the drug culture, he'll tell you. It took two minutes. I mean, it, the, the national average is uh, even I could walk into a high school, and if I knew the right connections, and I do, I could walk out with any substance, not heroin, but I could walk out with any substance in two minutes or less. I mean, you could ask the kids, they'd say the same thing. It is so much access, so easily accessible, and parents don't really know what the warning signs are. And in general, if they fly through their seven, you know, questions of how's school, how's the test, how's the girlfriend, how's sports, but kids really aren't giving enough information rather than saying, hey, really, are you tempted? What is the, you know, the local thing that's going on with kids? What about ecstasy? What about pot? Parents are scared to ask the questions because I think they're scared to hear the answer. Yeah, what are some scary things that you hear as a therapist for troubled teens that maybe parents don't even know is going on? Oh, I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum, though, because yeah. so much of the stuff that I hear is so aggressive. I mean, I, there's a local attorney in the Denver area who provides his son with cocaine, and his son is a cocaine dealer at the local high school. And what? dad profits from, you know, his dealing. You know, down to, you know, He's parents. He's providing coke. Absolutely. to high school kids. Absolutely. Well, the, the dad who's an attorney is providing it to his son who's dealing it at the local high school, and dad is profiting from it. What about the parents who are saying, I'm doing everything and I, I can't connect with my teen? Because I think maybe there's a, there's a group that falls into that, that they may be at risk. What is at risk? To be totally blunt, though, just about your first question, you know, a parent who says that I'm doing everything right is a parent who's still missing the point, the point because what they're doing is they're, they're making it about them rather than making it about their, their child. And really for me, you know, if I spend too much time lecturing one of my kids or going on too long, I'm making it my agenda, not my child's agenda. And that's the deal is we need to focus on what is truly going on with our kids. And that's where we're missing the point as parents. We don't know. If I had not gone to graduate school and spent as much time with these guys, I would have no idea how to connect with a child. John, you've dedicated your life to helping these kids. You have a toolbox full of things for parents to know. Um, coming up a little bit later in this show, he's going to reveal the five key tips to reconnecting and better communicating with your teenage son or daughter. And these things are probably things that you have never heard or thought of before, like breaking some of the rules, the parenting rules that maybe you really are staunchly believing in. Yeah, right we're going to teach you how to break the rules a little bit. And we know you probably have questions that you'd like to ask, John. So be sure to email us right now. Later in the show, we're going to read them and try to get some answers. Send your questions to us right now at feedback at morningblend.com. Feel free to ask anything, or perhaps you have some information you'd like to share with other viewers. Be sure to email us feedback at morningblend.com. And then if you're interested in purchasing John's book, Extreme Pursuit, Winning the Race for the Heart of Your Son, it's available at Amazon.com, most bookstores. But if you call the publisher today, Morning Blend viewers are getting a 10% discount. And we'll be putting the number up for uh, throughout the show for more information about John and then his alternative counseling program. You can also go to his website. It's 2 dot info that's the number two the letter x and then t r e m e dot info for his program and more information about his book but up next we will meet 18 year old tim when somebody murdered his older brother tim began to struggle with depression and drugs he even contemplated suicide in his darkest hour police say tim threatened his school with a Columbine-type massacre. Coming up after the break this morning, how he found a way to dig himself out of the ruins and change his life. Okay, this is Derek. He was murdered while attending a Christian college. He was dealing drugs on the side and got mixed